Hi everyone, Holly Wed from Arara High School here, bringing you my first video for 2023 on making maths fun. Now this year I have got a whole bunch of new activities to share with you guys, as well as a whole range of teaching strategies, which me and my faculty are starting to implement in our classrooms as well. So I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on some different ways that we're approaching teaching this year, as well as assessment and really just trying to work these new teaching methods in with what we know already works with our kids. So our first video today is going to be on directed number and I've got three different activities to share with you guys. Now the first resource I want to share with you guys today is open middle questioning techniques. Uh, we have started using a website called openmiddle.com and have found it absolutely fantastic with changing the way we're approaching our questioning techniques with students. So rather than, you know, giving them a worksheet with 20 different directed number questions on there, they're only actually being presented with one or two questions per lesson. And the questions are then created by the students themselves, you end up actually getting more work out of the kids than you would if you gave them 20 questions on a piece of paper, which has been a really interesting development with using this resource in my own classroom. Now, although the website itself is absolutely fantastic and has some amazing resources there, one of the problems that we have sort of run into when trying to integrate this into the classroom is that it can seem like a bit of an impossible task to change your questioning technique from what you're used to seeing in a textbook or on a worksheet to adapt this open middle style of questioning. So a big thing that we've done is rather than um, just simply putting one of these questions straight from the website up onto the screen, we've created a bit of a scaffold for the students where they are presented with a worksheet that has one or two of these questions on it and it gives them a bit more support to work through their own questioning techniques. Now, here's an example of one of the aforementioned worksheets. This one, as you can see, there is only one question on it, but the student has gone through and had to ask themselves a whole bunch of very different questions to try and get to that one answer. And here is a second worksheet comprising of increasingly difficult questions for the students to work through. Again, just providing minimal questions and some directed scaffolding and having the students utilise their own critical and creative thinking skills to come to a solution. Now, these worksheets have been made by a colleague of mine and are now being utilised across the faculty as a whole. Uh, this has been a really awesome resource that we have used for directed numbers for Year 7, but it can be extended to a range of different um, topics as well. I have used open middle questioning techniques all the way up to my Year 12 advanced class at the moment, uh, and the students are just as engaged in every year level, so it's a fantastic resource to check out. Now, my second activity is a Clark Creative resource, which is a CSI criminal investigation. Now, students absolutely love the story behind this resource because they're not just presented with a worksheet and a bunch of questions. There's a whole story. So students are tasked with becoming the crime scene investigators in this story. They are told that there is an evil group called the Math Magicians who are trying to build a world conquering device. But as math magicians do, they've left a series of clues for them to solve. Students are then to work through the clues to try and unravel who the math magicians may be and how we can stop them. It's an awesome task. They usually take about a period uh, at school and I will usually let kids work in groups of uh, one to three, depending on the level of the class. To complete this task, students have to work their way through the scenes. So either individually or in a small group, they have to solve a series of clues uh, using their additive, their multiplicative strategies. So here are a couple of different scenes that the students will be faced with, requiring them to use their knowledge of addition and number sense to work their way through these different clues. Now, as the clues progress, they increase in complexity and really get the kids thinking critically about the steps they need to take to find the correct answer. 
Now these can be found on a range of topics on both the Clark Creative website and Teachers Pay Teachers. I found this task is really good to use as a summative task, sort of closer to the end of the topic, when students are comfortable with a range of different, um, with using a range of different strategies to try and solve questions, especially if you've been presenting your students with questions that are outside of the norm, that aren't just a copy and paste of questions. Uh, I find that they react really well to these sorts of activities. Now this final activity is one that I created myself and it's a really fun little activity that I have found is good to use at the end of a period for maybe 15 or 20 minutes just to really be able as a teacher to assess your students' genuine understanding of adding and multiplying their positive and negative numbers together. So I have found that some students, when they are put in groups, um, they tend to just sort of float through. And it's hard to try and find ways outside of a formal test to assess the student's genuine understanding of the content that you're teaching. So to combat this, I came up with this task to try and really get a, a grip on where my students were at and make sure that they did fully understand, you know, positive and negative numbers and what happens when you add, multiply, divide, subtract all of that sort of stuff with those directed numbers. So for this activity, all you need is a set of cards. Now, the way that I play this is that students will draw a card from the deck of cards. If they draw a red card, their number is negative. So this one, if I drew this one, I would be negative eight. Black cards are positive. So if I drew this one, I would be positive two. Um, students are then to find a match through finding one partner or a series of partners to get to a particular number. So if I said that I wanted the number to be negative six, the two students that had negative eight and two could pair themselves up and be like, miss together, we make, we make negative six. Um, you know, alternatively, if I had said I want negative 16, these two could have paired up again and said, we're multiplying together, miss, we're negative 16. Um, it's a really great little activity because students have to try and work out what, what could I add to myself to get to that number? What could I multiply myself by to get to that final number that you're looking for? Uh, ways that you could change this up to make it easier or more difficult is you could put stipulations in that there has to be a certain number of people. So obviously it's quite easy to get to an answer by adding or subtracting or multiplying just two numbers together. It's fairly simple. If all of a sudden I tell you, no, you've got to have at least three people in your group to make that final number, it starts to get a little bit trickier. The next level up again could be, okay, now you have to have two different operations. You can't just have addition. You have to have one addition and one multiplication or, you know, one addition and one division. So it, there's a lot of different ways that you could level this up and down for the kids to make it more or less difficult and really get a good picture of where your students are at with their individual understanding of positive and negative numbers. Now, I have found with this activity that giving students access to vertical whiteboards to help them write down some of their working out, because not all students are great at doing it in their head, um, has been a really positive thing and has made it flow a lot easier students write down a series of questions and go, okay, I know that I'm looking for either, you know, one of these three numbers and these are the three things that I could do to get to that number that Mrs. put on the board. Um, and then they go around the room and try and find people with that number. So it's a great little, uh, great little activity. Um, the only other thing that I have done with it which was quite challenging because I have quite a chatty year seven class at the moment, but I tried to make it silent. So students had to communicate with each other without speaking what they thought the two numbers could be together. And it actually, using the whiteboards, it came up with some really interesting strategies for students to pair themselves off uh, when I did make it silent. So this is a really fun little activity. It gets kids out of their seats, gets them using those vertical whiteboards, gets their thinking going. 
um, and is a really, I found it to be a really positive task in my classroom. Now I have created a worksheet to go with this task just to help students uh, keep track of the numbers that they have used and the cards they have used to, um, to get to their final answers. It is then something that can be checked at the end um, and it gives a bit of a log of what they have been doing throughout this activity. Here is a quick look at what that worksheet looks like and as always a free copy of this will be linked to this video for you all to use as you see fit in your own classrooms. Well there you have it guys, three different activities to help engage your students in learning directed numbers. I hope you guys have enjoyed these activities and as always all the resources that I have mentioned will be linked to this video so that you guys all have access to them. If you have enjoyed this video please make sure that you like and pop a comment down the bottom if there's anything specific that you would like me to cover in my other videos coming out this year and as always please make sure that you do subscribe to the ACER Teacher YouTube channel. Thanks guys, see you next time.